Hi, I'm Mindy Peters, the Solutions Manager at SPI. And in this video, I am going to show you Circle's new member directory. And I'm going to show you a cool thing you can set up for your community to make the member directory search really powerful. So here I am in Circle. This is our SPI Pro community and I'm in the new member directory. So here's what's so great about this member directory. Previously in Circle, you only had the ability to search for members by name, which is fine if you know everybody, but a lot of the time in online communities, you don't know anybody. You're joining the communities to meet new people. And one of the things that would be really great would be to search the membership to find people who are like you in some way. Either they live in the same area that you live in, or they have the same type of job or the same kinds of interests. And up till now, we haven't been able to do that kind of search inside of Circle, but now we can. You have the ability still to search by name. You do that here. But then we also have the ability to search by all of these different attributes. And so if you wanted to say, so this is the member bio to search for a term that's in the member bio, you can put that term here and the search algorithm will pull up anybody who has that term. You also, you can search by location, which is really cool. The one that we're going to focus on in this video though is search searching by tags. So let's take a look here. Here are all of the tags that we are using inside of our SPI Pro community. And when this new directory rolled out, we set up a bunch of tags that we thought would be useful for members to connect with each other. So we are working with online entrepreneurs in this community. And so we set up things, products that we think that our customers might be selling. So maybe they're working with affiliate marketing and that's how they make their money. They may want to search for each other and find other affiliate marketers or by medium here. So podcasting this way, I could come into the directory and pull up everybody who said I am a podcaster and I could start reaching out to those individuals. Now, the way that this is going to be most effective is if the community members themselves can apply these tags. Circle doesn't have a really good way for that um, built into the community yet. And so we have set up a system that I'm going to show you here so that your community members can tag themselves and then those tags will be automatically applied inside of the community. Um, you can probably guess it's going to involve a form and it is going to involve Zach for automations. I also have included in here our email service provider so that all of these tags when they're applied will also get stored in our email service provider because that can be a very useful thing to know too. So here's what we're going to do. I am going to walk you through the automations as I have set them up for our community and provide a little commentary in ways that you could do it perhaps a little bit simpler, but then also adapt this system for your own circle community. So let's get started. The first thing that you need to do in setting up this system is to think about the tags that you would like. And you're going to want a balance here of um, having enough differentiation between the different things so that they're meaningful to the members without going overboard. Because as you're going to see for every tag we set up, we are going to need a companion Zapier automation. And so if you came in here and set up 40 different tags, that's going to be really tedious and um, could also maybe push you past maybe your Zapier plan or something. And so that's going to be really tedious. So we struck a balance. Let's see, we got a handful here. I think we were sort of in the like 12 range of different tags here. So these are all the tags that we're working with. The first thing I did was just come in here. So I'm in settings member tags, and then I just hit the create member tag button. There's nothing really special about these, but let's just take a quick look at them. 
Because we're setting up so many tags, the one checkbox we decided to leave off was post and comments bio. So this is when somebody makes a new post or somebody's commenting, it will show a bunch of tags next to them if they have them applied. And because we're setting up so many tags here, that could get really cluttered looking. So we kept that off here, but we kept the tags on every other space and you can experiment with that. And we went with just icon and tooltip rather than label. Let me show you the difference between those. So this here is an example of a tag with a label. And so you can see the full label of the tag here next to it. But if I hover over one of these, this is a tag where it's just an icon with tooltip. And tooltip means that when you hover over the image, the, the words will show up with it. But when you're not hovered over the images, you don't see the words associated with it. So that's just the difference between those two types of tags. There's not really anything else special about this. So once you create your tag, just hit save. The next step is to set up a form which will allow your members to self-select their tags. I used a type form here. You can use whatever type of form that you're used to using as long as it's ultimately compatible with Zapier. My form is really simple. It's going to ask just a few questions. The first question is you need to collect their email address and you need to make sure that you tell them that the email address has to match whatever they're using to sign into your circle community. Those need to match so that the tags will ultimately get to the right person. Then just ask however many questions you need in order to collect your tags. So in this case, I'm asking two questions. I'm asking them what products do you sell and then what mediums do you use to communicate communicate with your audience. And so I've got all of these set up. Now from this point, after you have your form set up, you could go straight into Zapier and build an automation that is going to trigger with each one of these individual responses to apply those tags in circle. I'm going to add in an intermediate step here, and that is to first send all of this information over to my email service provider, which is ConvertKit. There are two reasons why I'm doing this. The first reason is that anytime I collect data, I like to store as much of it as I can in the same place as possible. And for us, that's our email service provider. And so ConvertKit is ultimately where I try to store all of my customer data if I can, as much of it as I can. And so for that reason, I want to store all of this data in there. The second reason is this is really useful stuff to know about my community members. And I can foresee a future where maybe I just want to email all of the SPI Pro members who are podcasters and not bother any Anybody else. In that case, I've stored all of that information because they have said I am a podcaster and they've added that tag to their profile. Now it's really easy for me to go into my email service provider, pull up all of those people right away and send them an email without having to export that data from, you know, Circle or something and then import it into ConvertKit. I've already automated that process. And so that is another big reason why I would want to first send this stuff over to my email service provider. The third and final reason why I like why I've inserted ConvertKit into this process is then it also allows me to collect this tagging information via link triggers in email. I don't have to use that form. I could also just make clickable links inside of an email that an SPI Pro member could click on. And then when they click that link, I'm using a link trigger to add the relevant ConvertKit tag. And so I can basically have a couple of options. I can use the form or I can use clickable links in emails. Now it's super handy that Typeform has a native ConvertKit integration. And this was actually my first time trying that integration out. So let me show you that integration. Once you have set up your form and published it, you can go over to connect and then search for the ConvertKit integration. And Typeform is going to serve you up two options for ConvertKit. The older way was, hey, you can connect to ConvertKit via Zapier. But the new way is we have this native integration. So let's take a look at how I've set up that integration. We'll hit edit here to take a look at it. Now, before I set up this integration with ConvertKit, there's a step that I'm going to need to do first 
over in ConvertKit. And that will be to make sure that I've set up all of the tags in my account that match the tags that live over in the community. So basically, I'm giving my, my data a place to go inside of ConvertKit. And it's up to you as you do this to decide if you would like to use custom fields or tags. You can use either one. In this instance, I've decided to set everything up as a series of tags in ConvertKit because these are not sort of exclusionary elections. Basically, you can, ha you can have multiple product tags. You can have multiple medium tags. And so for that reason, I've decided to go with tags inside of ConvertKit. And let me show you. You can just see here, here are all of my tags. And it's maybe worth noting, they don't need to be named identically. So over in uh, SPI Pro, they're called just um, medium video, but over in ConvertKit here, I'm calling it SPI Pro directory tag medium video. That just tells me, you know, sort of what does this data belong to? This data belongs to SPI Pro directory. It's the medium video tag. So now we can go and take a look at our integration here. We can set that up. I'll show you the integration I've already set up here. In the first step, you will authenticate your Typeform account and basically say, yes, I wanna use this app. Then we'll hit next. In the next step, you will connect in your ConvertKit account. You do that by adding your secret key in and you get that in ConvertKit in your settings, your advanced settings. We'll go to next. Now, this is where we start to map the data being collected in the type form with where it should go inside of ConvertKit. And you've got a couple of options here for, for mapping responses to tags. You can say that you would like to map all of the responses to a single tag. So that might just be you want to um, add a tag into ConvertKit saying somebody has completed this type form. That's not what we want to do here. We want to map multiple choice responses to a tag. And then the final option is if you were say delivering a quiz and maybe you had say four, four endings to that quiz, you could match each of those endings into ConvertKit. We're going with map multiple choice responses to tags. And then yes, we would like to update our existing subscribers. This is not just for adding new subscribers in. Now we'll hit next. Okay, so now you just go through and you pick all of your multiple choice responses and it's from a drop down here. Uh, Typeform is gonna show you every multiple choice option that you had inside of your form. And it will then let you map that over to any of your ConvertKit tags. So in the left-hand side, these are all the Typeform responses. And then in the right hand side here, this gives you all of your ConvertKit tags and you can search for your ConvertKit tags if you have a lot of them like we do. When you are done adding in all of those tags, you'll hit next. And then this is where you can map to a custom field instead. If you would rather do that, you can map to a custom field. You must map the email address. So from right here, you just choose the question there, and then you say this goes to the ConvertKit field email. And if you needed to add in a new mapping, you would click on this, and then this would let you map another question here over to one of your custom fields that you have. I'm not gonna do that. When you're done, hit finish. So now you're done setting up your type form and you are sending all of your information over to ConvertKit, which is great. So this is a great moment to stop and just run a little bit of a test. Hit view here and that will open up your form. Go ahead, fill out your form, select a couple of tags, but not all of them. And then watch and make sure that those that tagging shows up in your email service provider. There might be a little bit of a delay depending on the type of integration that you're using. Once you've run that test and you've validated that the data is being passed from Typeform over to ConvertKit or your email service provider, now we can move on to Zapier. This is going to generate as many Zapier automations as there are tags. And so you might wanna set up an extra separate folder just to hold all of these directory tags. I did just because you can see it resulted in a lot of zaps. But the good thing here is you're going to make the zap once and then you'll just make a copy 
tweak a little bit of information, make a copy, tweak a little bit of information. So it goes pretty fast once you get started. Let's go into our first automation. Your trigger app is going to either be Typeform or it's going to be your email ser service provider. In my case, it's ConvertKit. If you went through the steps of hooking up your email service provider, you'll want to use that as your trigger rather than Typeform. Reason being, when I went through those three reasons why I wanted to include ConvertKit, the third reason was because I want to be able to collect data from an email link trigger as well. Because of that, I have to use ConvertKit as my trigger app. If I hadn't hooked in my email service provider, then instead my trigger app would be Typeform. My trigger event here is a new tag subscriber in ConvertKit and I will go through and set that up. And so my setup trigger here, my tag for the first one is going to be my SPI Pro directory tag email medium. Just start with your first tag and you'll work your way down your list. So my first tag is this one. In order for the testing in Typeform to work with ConvertKit tags, you have to have some sample data for each tag. The easiest way to do that is to just pull up your own, pro your own profile inside of ConvertKit and apply every single tag to your profile. That way you'll have at least one piece of data for testing. So when I go to hit test trigger, it then is gonna find me and pull, pull me up here. Um, if I hadn't done that, then it would say, this tag has never been used. We can't find any data. You can't proceed at that point. So if you get that warning, just go in and add that tag to your profile in ConvertKit. Now we'll move on to the action and our action app is circle and our event is going to be tag a member. You'll select your community from the list of communities that you belong to and then you'll choose the tag that it, you want to add to someone's profile. And in that case, for me, it's my medium email tag. Then you'll click in this field here. That's going to show you all of your data from step one. You'll choose your subscriber email, click on that, and that'll add that here. And then all that's left is to hit test action. It's really simple. So just hit test and continue and then go into your circle community just to verify that that tag got passed over. So this is a really simple two-step zap. You can do this zap in the free Zapier plan because there's only two steps. Basically, you're saying anytime that tag is added in my email service provider, also add that tag into circle. Once you've done that and you've turned your zap on, we'll go back to our folder and then making a copy of a zap is really simple. You just click the drop down here and you say copy. And when you make a copy, it will get added to the bottom of the list here and it will be turned off. Just click on that. And then all you need to do to make each next one is to come in here, go to the setup trigger here change the tag that is your trigger. So just pick the next tag that you want to work with. Do that, hit test trigger, and then come down here to set up action and switch to the correct tag in circle. Go to test action, make sure everything worked, and then you can turn it on. And that way you can work through a big list pretty quickly. So that is what you need to know in order to set up this tagging inside of your circle member directory. So you set up a form, you pass the data from that form either just directly over to Zapier or first you pass it to your email service provider. And then you go into Zapier and you say, anytime that we get this data, let's add this tag in circle. And it is a nice smooth process. Now that you have this type form, you can share that with your members and ask them to fill that out. I would also recommend putting that type form into your member onboarding process. So if you have an email series that goes out when you have a new, you know, new members that join your community, or if there is maybe some also, you know, we have our start here space where we have kind of here's all the things you should do when you first join, put it there. So just put that type form in various places where your members will see it, fill it out, and 
then you have a much more functional member directory search. If you're watching this video to get a sense of whether or not Circle is right for you, you can sign up for Circle with our affiliate link. That's smartpassiveincome.com slash get circle. And if you're interested in joining our SPI Pro community, you can go to smartpassiveincome.com slash pro and fill out an application.